difficulty and calls to me just to sort of say a few last words. Um, there's certainly no possibility of summarising. I don't think everything that we talked about today. That would be a Herculean task that would uh, take a lot longer than five or ten minutes. So I'm not going to certainly attempt to do that. Um, just thinking back a little bit, I mean, the CBA set up AirNet, the Historic Environment Information Resources Network, in 1998. And one of the purposes behind that initiative, which brought together organisations from right around the UK, was to get some collaborative engagement and some, some thinking going on right across the sector. Because we recognised that even at that stage, there was a real danger uh, of, of data hugging and, and silos. Uh, and initiatives that were uh, very constrained within the organisational context that we saw. And one of the real values, I think, of AirNet um, has been the focus that it's provided on collaboration, uh, which is clearly one of the key themes these days, particularly because of uh, reducing resources. It means that partnership working is even more valuable, perhaps, than it was uh, previously. The other role, key role of AirNet over, over the years has been to very much focus on, the, on users um, and try and you know, continue to encourage people to think about what users want um, and not just to go off um, left field um, and, uh, and follow our own sort of uh, technological opportunities. Uh, and I think that's been really re reflected very well in the discussions today. And it was really helpful that the first session obviously started off from that perspective, encouraging us to think about users um, and indeed, I think, creators uh, of data as well. It starts right at that beginning point, and we need to think about the opportunity right from the start to make sure we're as efficient as possible uh, in the modern era, um, and also that we're taking advantage of the opportunities for interoperability, uh, thinking about how we could use um, the, uh, the technological opportunities through open link data, etc., right from that very early point. That will encourage use, it will encourage reuse, it will encourage people to build on the data that we've collected. None of us have perfect data systems. None of us will probably ever have perfect data systems. The best way to keep, to keep them moving forward, improving, is by people using them, feeding back. Um, and that's why organisations obviously like the Archaeology Data Service are so crucial to our discipline, because uh, they provide that sort of fundamental understanding um, and, uh, and making sure that the data is fundamentally secure, but also migrating it forward, encouraging reuse um, wherever we have that possibility. We've heard a whole range of, of really good presentations, I think, today, um, which have really stimulated the discussion. And that was the point of today, was to very much engage the widest possible audience from right across the different parts of the historic environment sector with some of these issues that we all um, come at from our various different perspectives. Um, it's been really valuable to pick up and to hear some of the things that have gone on. And this isn't, a, this isn't an end in itself. The whole point of today is very much the start of the next phase of thinking through groups like Airnet and FISH, um, as to where we go next, how we take advantage of some of the really exciting opportunities that exist in terms of IT um, and you know, the collaborations that we've started to see, the work that people like Dan have been able to, to show at uh, PAS, which are real exemplars, I think, of what you can do. And one of the real things we all have to think about is how we embed those opportunities and work collaboratively within our organisations. Organisations that can often be quite conservative and slow moving in the way that they operate, as organisations often are. Um, and you know, as a sector, it seems to me we've always been really, you know, one of our real benefits as a sector is that we're all enthusiasts for what we do, for our, for our discipline, for our subject. That can lead us too far into temptation at times, um, and we have to be careful, I think, sometimes about that, to make sure, um, as, as Kate Clarker obviously uh, picked up originally, that, uh, that we don't go too far in terms of the risks um, and, uh, of what we're doing, making sure that we are able to build on and not lose suddenly a lot of people. But what's, what's been really, um, I think, encouraging to see um, is the increasing use of data in an academic context. Um, and Chris's project, obviously, is a real uh, exemplar of that. But the sort of work that people like Richard Bradley have been able to do, we're now starting to see that for Roman uh, archaeology as well, building on existing information. We have a vast amount of information. The, myth, the, the, the data we've collected um, through developer-funded archaeology since 1990. There's a huge amount of material there that nobody's yet really been able to pull together and, and, and make complete sense of it and, and move forward. These systems that we're talking about today provide that opportunity, if we get it right, to enable a lot more of that creative thinking, to encourage that innovation. But it will inevitably be down to people um, and a bit of cake, um, where that's appropriate. You know, always, you know, a bit of cake never comes in any harm, it seems to me. We do need to think really hard, though, about the people side of it. Um, I mean, obviously, we're all worried about where um, the sector is going to be in the next five or ten years with what are inevitably ongoing um, cuts in the public sector. Um, 
that's really significant for us in relation to local authorities. Um, and obviously, you know, there are issues in relation to um, national heritage agencies, etc. as well. That's, that's a concern for us. Um, we've got to make the most of what we've got. There is a partnership to be had with the voluntary sector, I'm sure, um, not to replace the professional sector, absolutely not, um, but as a partnership to help work with us. And some of the crowdsourcing and, and uh, crowd sort of funding initiatives will be interesting to see what take up there is. There's a slight danger at the moment, it seems to me, that we're, we're building projects uh, on the expectation that the volunteers will come. Um, and I'm not convinced that they always will. Um, and we need to be working hard from the ground up, not just in a very top down way. Um, we need to be thinking very hard about skills um, and a lot of that I think ultimately comes down to leadership. Um, we heard uh, uh, there was quite a lot of talk earlier on about individual responsibility and clearly we all have to take individual responsibility but it seems to me there's also a very strong degree of responsibility um, by employers um, and by those who are in a position to have influence over the direction of our discipline and over our organisations. And I thought it was rather telling earlier on when we had a rather, in some ways, a slightly depressing conversation about MVQs. Um, and we asked, you know, who's got these MVQs? Um, and there's a, you know, a smattering of people around the room who, who wide, more widely have, got, have seen the value sufficiently of MVQs to go and actually get one. They're people at the start of their career. Um, nobody who is, in a sense, further on in their career has seen the value of those MVQs to go and get one for themselves. There's been no leadership from that perspective. Um, and if these, if these opportunities really are important for us, I think it's important that we show um, sectoral leadership. That can happen both through Airnet and through FISH. Um, and everybody can be involved in those things. These are not exclusive organizations. They're, FISH has a, a, a GISTmail um, uh, discussion list. Um, everybody can participate in that. The aim now is to continue these conversations as we move forward through those fora um, but in continuing to involve everybody. And what I, th what I think happens next after today um, is that everybody who's here will, be con will continue to be informed about some of the outcomes of today. We'll circulate and disseminate some of the, the typed up notes, the report that we'll, CBA will produce coming out of today. And, but that's again not the end point. And if you have further thoughts on your journeys home based around some of the collaborations that you've, you've potentially discussed today, make sure you feed them in through people like um, Dan as, as, uh, as the sort of secretary of GIS, uh, of FISH um, and other, other colleagues around. So please do keep thinking, do keep collaborating, do keep um, participating in some of these more, uh, more uh, wide discussions. So just to sort of close really, I'd just like to thank obviously everybody who's come today. I appreciate many of you have come a very long way to, uh, and uh, possibly had very early starts uh, to get here. And it's been really valuable to have your collective experience and, and wisdom to share in these discussions. Really grateful to everybody who's uh, spoken and, and prepared something. Very grateful to everybody who's, part, who's facilitated the discussions at the, at the individual tables. Clearly, we're very grateful to English Heritage who provided the funding for today. Um, we're very grateful to Phil for the acronym, which was clearly a crucial part of any major conference. And the fact that we've been able to be trending on Twitter today, I'm sure is a lot of it down to the acronym as opposed to necessarily the content of what we were talking about. But that in itself all helps. It gets us out there to a broader audience. Um, but finally, I'd obviously like to very much to thank Sarah Howard, who's borne the brunt of the organisational work behind today, working with uh, Dan, Jill and, and colleagues from English Heritage. So thank you very much indeed, Sarah. And your stress levels can now go down to a slightly lower level, hopefully, in the next few days. Um, so thank you all very much for coming. Uh, I think there's probably some tea and coffee if anybody wants to um, participate before you all head off. Uh, but I hope you all have safe journeys home. And keep thinking and keep collaborating. Thank you very much.